I'm Professor Cheetah from Harvard University and let's get right into the world of classical music. The world of classical music was very great and many great composers like Mozart, Beethoven, just fabulous composers. There was just a little bit of conflict at the time in Europe. So at that time period, there was a little bit of conflict happening in Europe, but the beautiful rhythm and light flow got everyone through it and it just fit in. It was relaxing music that we people still enjoy today. With the graceful movements of the sound, you will instantly have your mood changed. Also mentioned earlier by Historian Kim, it was a very peaceful time. Compared to other eras, you had a peaceful time and classical music kind of fit in very, very well. It was meant to, you hear the melody, how it flows through and it was very beautiful. And it kind of fit in, it fit beautifully with classical. And it just made it so perfect. And just like the classical music era, the Baroque era was very peaceful with the discovery of New York. And just many great composers like Bach. During the Romantic era, there were many new devices invented and America started to grow. And soon enough, classical music was on its way to fame! I said before, classical was relaxing and calming. It was free-flowing and you see, classical, it just made a lovely melody. The well-known rock was more it of... It was more of a dramatic music with tension and energy. The music in the classical era had a clear melody and was quite homophonic. Hey, let's see what homophonic means. Characterized by the movement of accompanying parts in the same rhythm as the melody. How is it financed? Well, many rich men supported people like Beethoven. They were giving classical composers generous amounts of money. You see men like Oscar Rudolph, one of Beethoven's pupils, <laughs> who gave him generous amounts of money. Was classical secular? Well, most of classical music was played in churches, but, well, let's just say sacred places. One of my favorite things about history is the fun facts and things that people don't really know. What blows my mind is that there's two skulls in Hayden's tomb! You see, in 1954, Hayden's skull was stolen. They decided to get a replacement skull and put it in, and the skull was later found. And the fake skull was never removed. Another cool fact is, a violin is made from 70 individual pieces of wood. You see, one other thing about the classical era is how many instruments were being played. The harpsichord was the main instrument of the classical era, but in the second half, it was mainly the piano. Orchestras would have music like... Enough with the chit chat. Let's get to the man, the myth, the legend, Beethoven. Beethoven, Beethoven. What a man. Ludwig van Beethoven was born in Bonn, Germany in some time of December 1770. He was baptized on December 17th of 1770, which made historians think that he was born around the 17th. Beethoven struggled with his social life immensely. This was mainly due to the fact because he was deaf. This made him immensely sad and mad. You see, Beethoven's father was a singer, but he's more famous for his alcoholism. Beethoven was taught to play music in a very young age. You see, Beethoven was beaten for every small mistake he made. Beethoven was very good at making the connection between romantic and classical music. Yes, Beethoven wrote many great symphonies in his life, but none of them were as great as Symphony No. 9. It was marvel. It's one of the greatest music pieces in history. People complimented it for the complexity and design of the symphony. The ending was truly epic, with this chorus singing Ode to Joy. One of his most famous pieces, for Elise, which many people can just recognize. No, classical music is just something so elegant, so beautiful, because it's so registerable. You ask your mother, your grandmother, your son, everyone knows it. It's something that truly affects me, because everyone knows what it is. It's something just so beautiful and so amazing. Cut. Action! It was truly beautiful!